be bap yo we're gonna look at the real implications of bringing a blender into a flash like this one and we're gonna do it right now so I'm gonna try and make a scene a situation where we got a cube in the center and two people at the sides something like this and the camera is gonna be back here just sort of arcing along just arcing. Total full blown arc. The time to make it happen. So, since relative motion isn't actually important, since it's just going to be a white black or a white background, I'm going to just have the cube spin and then uh, we'll interpret the camera movement in flash. You'll see what I mean. So, you need to get a spinning cube out of Blender. Let's get going. You're going to learn about the timeline, animating, texturing, everything that pertains to those. So a couple things I forgot that I was reminded in a YouTube comment made by a one Mr. Sean McCush Cubic. He told me these. Um, when you're dealing with stuff and you want to have a duplicate of it, Shift D will make you a second copy. Then you just start moving your mouse and it'll drag it out. If you do Shift D and left click, it'll just be in the same spot as the first one. Done, done. Uh, when you're holding something like this with the G key and you're moving it, you can hold shift and it'll do a one tenth version of what it was doing. Yeah. Same goes for scaling. You can uh, scale, hold shift, and do tiny scaling, you know, rotation, all that jazz. Shift is your modifier for small stuff. So take the cube, take it and put it right here in the center looking good I'm gonna hit seven and then five and put it right on the middle bit great and then I hit five to get out of that and just started using the middle mouse button and clicking and dragging to turn the camera let's put the view somewhere like it's sh uh, shift F to get into this mode and then once you have it where you want it like maybe right there it's control alt zero to put your camera where you need it, good deal. So grab your cube, R, Z, and then just kinda hold control and snap it to a good angle like that, nice. So we're gonna make the implication of the camera moving this way and staying looking at it by just spinning it instead. So if it were, it, the cube would be spinning counterclockwise. So how do you do that? Well, if you have an object selected, anything in Blender, put it on cycles, by the way. You don't need your light either, because we're going to use an emission texture for the cube. Right click it, hit I, go rotation, or you can do anything you want. But for this one, I'm doing rotation. And then it'll make a keyframe wherever your cursor was on the timeline when you had it selected. So change your end of your thing. This is where it will stop rendering to something like 30. Easy peasy. And then go ahead and hit R, Z, and just rotate it a little bit. And Blender remembers how many times you've gone around, so don't spin it a bunch. You gotta only spin it once. And then you'll think, all right, ready to go. But wait, you didn't move your cursor to the last frame. <gasps> oh no, do that first. If you wanna just hit a uh, shift right arrow, it'll jump, or left arrow, it'll jump to the first and last frames. And I think up jumps to the previous keyframe. No, it's every 10. Either way, get to frame 30 somehow. And then R, Z, spin it up. And then the next thing you have to do before you do anything else, I mean besides move the camera, is hit I and hit rotation. That's going to make a rotation keyframe at the end. And there's also one at the beginning. So now, if you hit Alt, A, that's your button to play things in Blender. It'll show you what you got. Yeah, yeah. So just imagine the camera is spinning. However, I don't want it to do a full 360 arc. I kind of want it to do more of just like a little short degree. So it really should only be spinning to where you reveal maybe one more side. So how do you fix a keyframe once it's done? Well, you can hover over it and you can change it. Oops, I'm not hovering over it. Get right over 30, hit R, Z, bring it back a little bit, I, and then do the rotation again. And this is going to replace instead of insert, since you already have one there. I, rotation, now it is different. 
See? But if you want to get a little more fine-tuned than that, you know, rather than just doing it by uh, replacing keyframes every time, you can go in, sorry, sorry, you can click these three little lines at the bottom of your 3D window, click drag up, and then turn this new window into a graph editor. And now if you scroll out, just zoom way out, you're going to see everything that's happening. So over on the left, it tells you anything that has keyframes currently. Right now, there's a cube, which is this, with an action, which is the rotation that's happening on a rotation axis of Z. So you'll see the y-axis and the x-axis have no keyframes on it because it's just a straight line but the z has a bezier curve so if you click right at the end here the vertical is the um what's that called the amplification so up and down is how far it's spinning and then left and right is time so 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 Dealing with keyframes in Blender is really awesome. It's really intuitive. In the 3D window, you hit G to move stuff and like S to scale stuff and R to rotate it. Um, and in the graph view, you do the exact same thing. G, mm, see that? R, look at that, S. It's so cool. It's, it's, mm, it's the only program that I've seen that does it like that. So cool. So you can also do your um, modifiers like the X, Y, and Z axis. Only X and Y because uh, the graph view is 2D. So if I hit G to move it and then I hit Y, it's going to be locked vertically no matter how far left and right I move my mouse. So cool. Oh my gosh. So if I just want it to go a little bit, bam. And let's see how that's looking. Maybe a little bit more. Oops, I hit H right there. If you ever hit H on accident, just undo. Or if it's been too long and you forgot what happened, try hitting Alt H like that, and it'll unhide anything that's hidden in the current window you're in, which mine is graph. You can hide stuff in here too. H and then Alt H. Bam. So let me just uh, stretch this a little bit, move it up and down. Let's see how that's looking. Alt A to play. Okay, I'm gonna hit zero on the number pad to go to my camera view. Look at how that's looking. I actually think the first one needs to be a little bit more offset. So I'm gonna drag that up. There you go. I also want it to slow down a little bit more. So I'm gonna hit G on this left keyframe. Cause I, I right, <laughs> you right click it, then you just right click the left one and then you hit G and X. Now you're moving along the X axis and stretch that out a little bit so it slows down nice and smoothly right at the end just like that mm. okay, okay now let's texture this bad boy slam down that graph view hit tab oops don't hit don't hit tab just yet don't listen to me also put this on gpu like normal something's wrong something's wrong what's with my thing ah Oh, there, it's back. I don't know what that was, but I couldn't see these other options. Um, just make a new cube if it's not working. So go to this little window with the, the circle that looks like a Newton's, it, uh, it's like the nuclear symbol, kind of, you know what I mean. You go in, should have a texture on it already. If not, just hit new texture. And then if you're in cycles, hit use nodes. And then now, change this to emission you're gonna give this an emission shader and then uh, put the color at like anything you want but I want to give multiple sh uh, textures to the faces on this so we can actually see what's going on in this case I need to texture four faces because I see one two three four All right. so let me keep the top one as this red color and I'm gonna go in and change all the sides. So hit tab, now you're inside of it. Okay, you still have your texture window. It works the exact same way. Same way. Uh, hit control tab and go to faces. Right click one of these faces. This is the side that you see last. Go up here in the texture tab. New texture. It isn't applied to this face now though. This face still has the first texture on it. 
So the way to get it onto this brand new texture is to do a sign. Now it is different when you export it. And if you want to give that a different color than dark gray, you just hit new, like before, make it uh, go to surface, make it emission, and then just do something new. And don't don't change this too much. Uh, in cycles with emission shaders, if they go too high, it starts to blow out and just become solid white. All right, there you go. So repeat that process for the other two faces, or three, however much your cube is spinning. And then you will be good cooking and ready to export. Let's do pink. So there is a multicolored cube. And the back sides are going to be red because I didn't give those a new texture. But it's okay because we don't see those sides from the camera view. I only see those four. Cool beans. Next, you gotta export that thing. So go into your scene window and change the film setting to transparent. So you got that alpha background, sweet and delicious. Go up here. Oh, and to move up and down in this, you can middle mouse click and drag like normal. Okay, what we're gonna be using is the animation function of the export down here are your dimensions uh, I'm just gonna keep it as it is because this is fine for this test uh, but you might want to crank it up for HD if you're doing a really important export frame rate 30 because that's what I'm animating in um, 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 um. it doesn't matter but it matters if you're doing long stuff and you're trying to export PNG sequences don't don't worry too much about it heavily because you can re-ramp your frame rate after the fact. Alright, start frame 1, end frame 30. Make sure that lines up with this. Good, good, good. Oop. 30 and output. Where's output? Right here. Click this button under the output section and make sure you put it in a good spot. I'm gonna go desktop blender tester. Check that and then BT accept it this is when you would change your sampling and your performance but I'm not gonna do that so so, so oh, I'm gonna do my performance I'm a crazy man for saying I'm not put this at 256 256 it's always faster ready steady and you just hit this button under the render section look at it go I'll be back when it's done That's it. Exported Wazoo. Go open up Flash. Get rid of all this. Okay, okay, okay. So, this is where things get intense. Open up, do Windows key E, and then find yourself your folder. Should be Blender Tester. You got all these lovely frames. You can even keep them as PNGs, you guys. Slam them down into there. Select all, drag and drop into the library. Now, now's the unfun part of any good crossover. Uh, but I found a way to do it moderately fast. Drag, new frame. Just do that. I'm hitting, you're, you're probably going to be hitting F7, and then just go down the list and drag them out anywhere on here is fine. Okay, back to it. And gotcha. So now you're going to have this crazy all over the place thing, and that's fine. That's what you want, because it's it's fast to just get them out one and one like that. Hit the edit multiple frames button. Hit this button. Go to onion all. Uh, hit control A to select all, or right click and select all. And then go modify, align. Uh, make sure two stage is selected, and then go back in and go to vertical center. And then you're going to align them to horizontal center. And this is going to bring all the cubes into the middle, and it's going to align your frames perfectly. And now you're ready to start working with it in Flash. So, how do we do the shot I wanted to do earlier? It's pretty simple. In fact, I'm actually going to scale this cube down a little bit. So the way to scale it down is either to put these all into a symbol, and then scale the symbol down. Or if you want to be fast and quick without making a symbol, do the same thing as before. Select all go to free transform and just scale every single frame down at the same time and there you have it Whew. good good so we want to get the person in the foreground and the person in the background 
and I'm gonna call this tutorial done after that lock off your layer so that doesn't happen and get a color of a person here's a person colored color cool he's got like his hands out like he's ready to do something I'm gonna try this guy and the other guy and be right back got him done here we are gonna take the end frames of them and just move them in like that maybe it'll look good all right it's trickier than I anticipated but I don't want this to be a whole thing so let me find a quick fix okay here's my here's my quick fix just do motion guides if you want to learn how to do motion guides I have a whole section on it in my tweens tutorial yeah so I'm gonna select both of these tweens now go edit and put them to a nice ease in ease out remember the graph shape from blender trying to emulate what I had going on in this graph right here Oh, also, if you're ever in a uh, graph mode and you want to change your scale on just one uh, axis, you grab the top of this slider and you drag it up. There's another way to do it that I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Maybe you... that's it. You hold control and then you middle mouse click and drag on the slider and it'll scale it real fast. There you are. Bam. Oh, also the coolest thing about this program, look at you middle mouse click and you drag off to one side. Look what's going to happen. Look what it pushes your mouse over to the other side. You can never go off the edge of the frame. It'll always give you more to work with. So cool. So I was trying to emulate this graph shape uh, in here. I got it pretty close. That's, uh, that's probably good enough. And hide your guides. Ooh, some sneaky 3D. <laughs> I'm going to make him a little bit smaller at the beginning. Snap, you guys. All right, you can obviously fine-tune it and make it work to whatever you need. This has been Bepler, talking to you about how to take a Blender object and put it into your 3D flash scene to get those camera angles. Happy hunting, guys. I'm going to do more complex examples soon coming up. Have a nice day. Oh, and you can download this in the description. It's there if you want it. <laughs> if you want it. Flash Pepler out!